Welcome to this YouTube channel. In this video we are going to talk about the top 10 facts about Persepolis Tact E Jamshade. So before starting this video like this video, and subscribe to our YouTube channel for future updates. The Achaemenid Empire's ceremonial capital was Persepolis, c. 550-330 BC. It is located in the Marv Dasht Plains, which are surrounded by Iran's southern Zagros Mountains. Shiraz is located 60 kilometers, 37 miles, southwest of the Persepolis ruins. Persepolis' earliest ruins date back to 515 BC. It is a superb example of Achaemenid architecture. In 1979, UNESCO designated the Persepolis remains as a World Heritage Site. The structure is elevated on a walled platform, with five palaces, or halls, of various sizes and spectacular entrances. The purpose of Persepolis is still a mystery. It was not one of Persia's, let alone the empire's, largest towns, but it appears to have been a huge ceremonial complex, that was only occupied periodically. The location of the king's private quarters is still unknown. Most archaeologists believed it was used primarily for celebrating Nowruz, the Persian New Year, which falls on the spring equinox, and is still an important annual event in modern Iran, until recent challenges. As seen in the stairway reliefs, the Iranian nobility, and vassal sections of the empire gathered to give gifts to the king. Outside of the palace complex, it's also unclear what permanent structures, existed. It's probably best to conceive of Persepolis, as merely that complex rather than a city in the traditional sense. The complex was conquered by Alexander the Great's troops in 330 BC, and the wooden components were quickly destroyed by fire, most likely on purpose. Here are 10 interesting facts about it. Number 10. Persepolis is derived from Romanized Ancient Greek. Persepolis, which is a composite of Perses and Polis, and means Persian city, or the city of the Persians. The city was known to the ancient Persians as Parsa, which is also the word for Persia's region. Persepolis was built on a, partially, artificial platform, as is typical of Achaemenid capitals. The location is known as Sad Sotan, which means hundred pillars, according to an inscription left by Sasanian prince Shapur Sakansha, the son of Hormuz II, in AD 311. The location is known as Takht e Jamshid, which literally means Throne of Jamshid, since medieval Persians attributed it to Jamshid, an Iranian mythological ruler. During the medieval time, the site was also known as Chehel Manar, which literally means 40 minarets. Number 9. The little river Pulver drains into the Kerr River near Persepolis. A 125,000 square meter terrace, partly artificially made and partially dug out, of a mountain, with its east side leaning on Ramat Mountain, is part of the site. Retaining walls on the other three sides vary in height depending on the slope of the ground. On the west side, a double stair rose from 5 to 13 meters, 16 to 43 feet. It slowly climbs up to the top from there. The level terrace was created by filling depressions with soil, and large rocks and connecting them with metal clamps. Number 8. Persepolis' earliest remains, according to archaeological data, date back to 515 BC. The French archaeologist André Goddard, who investigated Persepolis in the early 1930s, believes that Cyrus the Great chose the site of Persepolis, but that Darius I built the terrace and palaces. The inscriptions on these structures support the theory that they were built by Darius. Number 7. The scepter was passed to a new branch of the royal house with Darius I during his reign, Persepolis was most likely made the capital of Persia. The city's isolated in hilly position, however, made it an inconvenient residence for the empire's rulers. Susa, Babylon, and Ekbatana were the genuine capitals of the nation. This could explain why the Greeks didn't know much about the city, until Alexander the Great conquered and plundered it. Number 6. The construction of Persepolis, by Darius I ran concurrently with the Palace of Susa. The Susa Palace, according to Jean R. Garthwaite, was Darius' model for Persepolis. The Apadana and the Council Hall, Tripolon or the Triple Gate, as well as the main imperial treasury, and its environs, were built by Darius I during the reign of his son, Xerxes I, these were completed. Construction of the buildings on the terrace proceeded, until the Achaemenid Empire fell apart. According to the Encyclopedia Britannica, Cetesias, a Greek historian, Darius I's grave was located on a rock face that could only be accessed by ropes. 
Number 5. The construction of a large stairway began around 519 BC. The stairs were supposed to be the main entry to the terrace, which was supposed to be 20 meters 66 feet, above the ground. The Persepolitan stairway was a symmetrical dual stairway built on the western side of the Great Wall. The 111 steps were 6.9 meters, 23 feet, wide, with 31 centimeters, 12 inch, treads and 10 centimeters rises, 3.9 inches. The steps were originally thought to have been built to allow aristocrats and kings to ascend by horseback. According to new hypotheses, the shallow rises helped visiting dignitaries to keep a majestic demeanor when ascending. The stairways led to a tiny yard on the terrace's northeastern side, opposite the Gate of All Nations. Number 4. The predominant building material in Persepolis was grey limestone. The terrace was prepared after the natural rock had been smoothed, and the depressions filled in. Subterranean sewage tubes were dug through the rock. At the mountain's eastern foot, a massive elevated water storage tank was carved. Professor Olmsted speculated that the cistern was built, concurrently with the tower's construction. The terrace's irregular plan, including the foundation, operated as a fortress, with slanted walls that allowed defenders to attack any part of the external front. Persepolis, according to Diodorus Siculus, had three walls with ramparts, each with a tower to offer a safe place for the defense staff. The first wall was 7 meters, 23 feet, tall, the second was 14 meters, 46 feet, which spanned all four sides, was 27 meters, 89 feet, tall, however it no longer exists. Number 3. After invading Achaemenid Persia in 330 BC, Alexander the Great used the royal road to send the bulk of his army to Persepolis. According to Diodorus Siculus, Alexander and his army were welcomed, on their route to the city by 800 Greek artisans who had been taken by the Persians. The majority were older and had been mutilated in some way, such as a missing hand or foot. They revealed to Alexander that the Persians wanted to take use of their city's skills, but had handicapped them so that they couldn't readily flee. The account concerned Alexander and his staff, so they donated clothing and nourishment to the artisans before carrying on to Persepolis. Although Diodorus did not mention this as a reason for Persepolis' destruction, it is probable that following the experience, Alexander began to see the city negatively. Number 2. Persepolis remained the capital of Persia, as a province of the mighty Macedonian Empire in 316 BC. The city has to have gradually deteriorated over time. The lower city at the foot of the imperial metropolis might have lasted longer, but the Achaemenid ruins remained as a testament to its former greatness. It's likely that the country's, or at the very least the district's, main town was always in this area. A stack, five kilometers north of Persepolis, was the seat of the local governors in 200 BC. A stack grew in importance as a center of priestly wisdom and orthodoxy, as the foundations of the Second Great Persian Empire were formed there. With their sculptures and inscriptions, the Sasanian kings have covered the face of the rocks in this area, including the Achaemenid remains in part. They must have been largely constructed there as well, though never on the same scale as their ancient forefathers. Despite the fact that the Sasanians had maintained favorable or hostile connections with the empire for 400 years, the Romans knew as little about Astak as the Greeks knew about Persepolis. Number 1. Astak put up a valiant fight against the Muslim invasion of Persia at the time. In the first century of Islam, it was still a significant city, albeit its influence was quickly superseded by the rising metropolis of Shiraz. Astak had faded to obscurity by the 10th century, as seen by the descriptions of Estakri, a native, c. 950, and al muqadar c. 985. Astak steadily degraded throughout the years, eventually ceasing to exist as a city. What do you think about this video? Do let us know down in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video and want to hear from us again, be sure to hit that subscribe button before you go.